Hey guys, Richard Holder here and welcome to the channel. Here's the question. Do you really need a cam upgrade on your Turbo LS? I mean, can't you just raise the boost? In this video, we're going to add a single S475 Turbo from Summit Racing to a 5.3 liter LS. We're first going to run it with the stock camshaft. Then we're going to perform a cam upgrade. Then we're going to find out if we can just raise the boost with the stock cam to equal the power output of the cam upgrade. Then, you know how we do it. We're going to raise the boost on the cam upgrade. To illustrate the difference in power gains offered by just raising the boost with a stock cam on an LS or adding a camshaft to your Turbo LS, obviously we have to start out with a Turbo LS. But before we can do that, we have to start out with a naturally aspirated LS and show what happens when we first add boost to it. So this particular motor was a 5.3 liter, but it was a modified version actually belonged to David Freiberg. So thumbs up to David for allowing me to use it for this test way back. It was a 5.3 liter LM7, but it did have forge rods and forge pistons. Now the pistons were dish, which brought the compression down from the factory. It was equipped with a set of TrickFlow 205 CNC ported heads. And in this case, it had a fast manifold for some other things that we were doing. Now, don't worry, don't freak out that it didn't have a truck manifold and stock 706 heads. What we're showing running the stock cam versus the aftermarket cam, in this case, it's a Pro LS cam from Summit. Uh, the effect would be the same thing, whether you grabbed a motor from the junkyard or in this case, we had a forge one that you know belonged to somebody else. <laughs> Those are kind of the best ones. But we ran this motor, as I said, with a fast manifold, the TFS head, the low compression short block, although it was forged, but for this power level, it meant nothing. We ran a Holly HP management system. We ran the NA combination with long tube headers and 105 millimeter throttle body. And so we equipped this combination produced 359 horsepower and 384 foot-pounds of torque. This was also run on 91 octane, just regular pump gas the way that we do it, with just the open headers, uh, Mazir electric water pump, no accessories, yada, yada, yada. So the first thing that we did, obviously, was to add boost to it. And this thing still has, remember, it had the factory LM7, the stock camshaft. So the first thing we did was add boost to it. And this is certainly possible. A lot of guys wonder whether you have to run a turbo cam, and obviously the answer is no. You do. If you're going to run boost, it will work just fine with the stock cam camshaft. In fact, it will work just fine with most cams that you have out there. If you've got a cam in your motor and you want to add boost to it, just do it. It will probably work out fine. But here's what happened when we added boost with our stock camshaft. This was 7.7, .7, a peak of 7.7 .7 pounds. We also ran this on E85. Our turbo kit consisted of a Summit S475. This was a T6 version. The turbo kit that we ran was not a kit at all, just something I put together. So it was a stock truck exhaust manifold run with a dedicated Y pipe by JT Fab 77, Justin over there or uh, Justin, Jason over there, JT Fab 77 he whipped this thing up. It has a provision for two of our TurboSmart 45 millimeter wastegates, and it ended in a three inch V-band, which allowed me to use an adapter to run a T4 or a T6 turbo. In this case, we installed the T6 S475 from Summit. We also had an air to water intercooler from the guys at ProCharger. And as I said, we ran this thing on E85. So run with 7.7 .7 pounds of boost and the E85, our turbocharged 5.3 liter produced 567 horsepower and 596 foot-pounds of torque. So we have right away the obvious answer is that you can add boost to your stock turbo. It works just, I mean, to your, to your stock camshaft. It works just fine. It's not designed as a turbo camshaft, obviously, but it works just fine. But the question is, and this is for basically every LS owner, what happens when we then add a camshaft? What happens when we add a camshaft to this kind of boosted application and run it basically at the same power level? So let's take a look at that. Here's what happened when we ran boost on this baby. So as we can see, the camshaft made about the same low speed power down below 4200 or so, maybe a little, maybe a touch less, but then did make more power, quite a bit more power at the top, even running at the same boost level, 7.4 pounds versus 7, uh, 7.6 at the peak versus 7.7. .7. So we, we were very close on our boost. And this was all with a manual wastegate controller. This camshaft, uh, the cammed turbo application produced 679 horsepower 
and 624 foot-pounds of torque. So you can see the, the camshaft added quite a bit of power even at the same boost level, and that's because it, add, it would add a similar amount, or it would add power naturally aspirated, and then kind of get multiplied by the boost. That's why we like having camshaft so much. But you might be thinking, hey, why can't I just turn up the boost with the stock cam? You can, so let's check it out. Because we have a turbo combination, obviously there's always the option to turn up the boost. So if you have a combination running a stock camshaft and you want to make more power, the easiest thing that you can do is just crank the boost up. So we saw previously that this was our, and I'm only showing you the horsepower curve so they don't get confusing. I'm also going to show you the torque curves because there's a lot to talk about there. So this is our uh, stock cam with seven and a half pounds or so. Here's what happened when we added our Summit Pro LS camshaft at roughly the same boost. Our power jumped up from 567 to 679. But you could be thinking, yeah, but if we have a stock camshaft, we don't have to do a cam upgrade. We can just raise the boost. And here's what happened when we raised the boost from 7.5 up to 10.8. We didn't quite meet the peak power output of the cammed version with the more boost, but we could. Now, if we turned it up another pound and a half, maybe, or two pounds, we could make the same peak power. And But it would go to show you that we need between 12 and a half or 13 pounds to make with a stock cam to make the same peak power that we made with seven and a half pounds and the camshaft. So that gives you an idea how much a camshaft is actually worth relative to boost, but that doesn't tell the whole story. Take a look at all of this area below 5,500 RPM and look how much more power the more boost is making with the stock cam than the cam version at a lower boost level. And this is most, evident if I would show you the torque curves because you can really see what's happening here. So instead of horsepower, we'll take a look at torque. And this tells a big story. So the peak torque with a stock cam and seven and a half pounds, 596. Peak torque with the cammed version was seven and a half pounds, 623. The peak torque with 10.8 pounds on a stock cam, almost 700 foot-pounds, 694 foot-pounds. So take a look at all of this extra torque offered by just turning the boost up with a stock camshaft. So that has a lot of merit. And for a lot of guys, if you're running a towing application or heck, if you just don't want to do a cam swap on your, on your LS application and you just want to run more boost. Now, obviously, as we said, it's going to take quite a bit more boost to do it without the camshaft. But you certainly can, and the benefit is you have lots of response, you have lots of low-speed power. But obviously, even this doesn't tell the whole story, because <laughs> there's one final step. All of the people that have put cams in their cars, and, and we're going to switch back over here to horsepower. All of the people that have run cams in their Turbo LSs, which is a good way to go. What happens if we then just add boost to our cammed LS and here's what happens when we do that. So we ran our cammed version with the Summit Pro LS cam at 10.8 pounds and you can see it did exactly what we would expect. It made a lot more power. As a matter of fact it made the most amount of power 771 foot-pounds and made really every bit as much power as the cammed as the uh, high boost version with the stock cam. So there's something to be said for putting cams in your LS motor, but that's not the only option. As we've shown here, you can run and they work very well with stock cams. You can make good power. I mean, a motor that makes 650 horsepower with a stock cam is pretty sporty. It idles like a stock motor because it has a stock camshaft in it. Um, and it does all the things that you would expect. It just does more of it because you have boost. But if you want to make some serious power, obviously, the easy way to do that is to put a camshaft in it, do a cam, springs, boost. Obviously, it's a good idea to put, I always put head studs in there so that we put some ARP stuff in there, good head gaskets. And then you just go up and injector size and fuel pump, and you can make some serious power. I mean, this is 771 horsepower. We can take a look here at the, at the torque here. If I can get my, get my clicker to work here. And again, not surprisingly, the cam with the high boost made the most torque, 720 foot-pounds, and made every bit as much or, or almost as much as the um, high boost stock cam one, 
uh, except way down low, and we might be able to um, adjust that a little bit with tuning. But here's what happens when you're on stock cam or a cam upgrade on your Turbo LS. Let's check out the boost curves. Now that we've taken a look at the different options for improving power by running a stock cam and more boost or doing a cam upgrade on your LS, let's take quickly uh, take a look at the boost curves associated with all this testing. So this was our boost curve produced by our Summit S475 T6 Turbo running at 7.5 pounds or so with the stock camshaft. Here's what happened when we installed our Summit Racing Pro LS cam. See the boost and, and take a look at the scale here. You're talking about a difference of one or <laughs> yeah, less than two tenths of a pound. So it's it looks like it's jagged. You're moving around. It's just because of the scale over here. Um, and here's what happened when we went up in boost to our o over 10 pounds with the stock cam. And then over 10 pounds with the summit cam. You can see uh, boost actually started to fall off maybe just a little bit uh, with the bigger camshaft. And the reason for that is because we're using a manual wastegate controller on these. And as we go up in boost, we start making a lot more power. We start getting uh, a little bit more ex more exhaust flow. And then that, that has effect on back pressure, which ultimately has effect on, on the wastegates. It's not a lot here, but you can see for the most part, they're, the curves are pretty even. But uh, this is something we could cure with an electronic wastegate controller. But... That's um, about a half a pound uh, total out there at the very top. So there's even more power to be had with the Summit Cam at the higher boost level had we chosen just to adjust that. But for what we were trying to show, this is that, that difference really is not that critical. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from this little adventure comparing the stock cam to our Summit Cam upgrade on our Turbo LS? Well, we learned the following thing. Boost is obviously the great equalizer, and it's also possible to run around with a stock cam and boost and make a ton of power. Obviously, the ultimate way is to add a cam upgrade, but you can go to the wrecking yard, get an LS, put it in your car, add boost to it, and drive around. If you haven't driven around with a 600 horsepower stock cam turbo LS, you should. And guess what? If you need more power later on, you can always do a cam upgrade. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.